Routing has just changed forever. Now that's a bold statement, but Tanner's a bold person. And routers have not innovated meaningfully in a long time. Things as simple as query params have been lost in the ether, where Next.js kind of throws up its shoulders and just gives you nothing for the first render. Things like file-based routing have taken over the industry and changed where we put our routing, but not necessarily much of what we can do with it. There have been a lot of cool patterns around data loading with our routes as well. But the simple question of, when I click a link, how do I know it's going to the right place and that it's going there with the right data? That's not a question that we've asked ourselves enough recently. There are some code generator tools. There are some other experiments that I've seen all sorts of around the internet. But what I haven't seen is someone really go back to the router and rethink using our favorite thing, TypeScript. Can we make the entire experience of routing for your app safer and more consistent by using TypeScript as a set of contracts for our router? And Tanner has proven pretty definitively that the answer is yes. You absolutely can. <laughs> I am so impressed with what Tanner has built with TanStack Router. This is the first fully type safe router with first class search params and all of the tools you need to integrate it into many frameworks. Right now it's React and Preact, but we have solid, maybe even Vue and Svelte coming in the future. There's work being done to add SSR and there might even be some other fun features coming soon. I don't know how much Tanner's confirmed publicly, so I can't say, but uh, there are working SSR examples. There are lots of cool things here, but what I really want to do is just go into the demo and show y'all how great of an experience it is. We'll just go to this basic one in stack blitz. Here we are. Here's our route config. This is kind of like a TRPC router where it's a big config that has all the different routes. There's a create route helper that takes a path and a component. And you can do sub paths. You can have a path that has children that have different routes within it as well. And these paths, these routes and the parents and children and the params you expect within them are combined. And the result is a router that is fully type safe. So you can provide this in React here, just like React router or any other router, but your links use the router as the source of truth. So router.link is a link component that is based on this router's definitions. So if you try to pass a path that doesn't exist, so like I'm just gonna do slash fake, we're getting a type error here because that is not a real route. And if I just do the string here, I can autocomplete and see all of the different paths that this router knows of that I can route to and from. Magic, so powerful. But once you get into using the query params is when things get a little magical in super cool ways. So I have here loader data posts, router.use match posts. What this effectively says is that posts is a component that we expect to be on this route. And because it's on this route, the router has loaded this data. And now I have this data and I can right click go to definition and it brings me to the loader that defined this. I can even do the trick I shared earlier where we can, yeah, rename symbol to a uh, post or many posts maybe. And I bet this will rename, yep, here as well, magic. Because this contract exists within the TypeScript like virtual, uh, like uh, the TypeScript AST. So this is that same entity that we had in the loader there. This is a direct binding to that value. Since we're importing from the router, rather than defining types everywhere, we get to just use the types that are there. Whatever is returned in the router is what we're accessing here. And if I change this from slash posts to slash, I'm gonna get an error because this route doesn't load that data. But if I change this to slash posts, now it will, because it knows that that data exists on that route. Magic. This makes life building complex applications with lots of nested routes and URLs so much easier. Or this example where a post, a specific post has to have an ID. If I remove this parameter, we're gonna get a type error because this route needs a post ID. I can put an empty object here, but we're still gonna get a type error because this needs to have a post ID in it for this route. If I delete that, it'll be fine. But if I have the post ID here, it knows. Ah, this is so cool. I, I don't know how many of y'all have struggled with like needing to move a route from one place to another or building a link component or having links all over your app and then moving one thing and all those links break. This is a great way to make sure your links never break, your state has what it needs in it, and your data is loaded well at a route level. One more magic piece that isn't, I don't think it's demonstrated here, 
but is super powerful. It might be in kitchen sink. Let me switch over to the kitchen sink example fast. So we're going to go into here to the main. And a dashboard, users, sort by ID, filter by Theo. Cool. The reason I did all this is it's going to, does it not show the effect this all has on the URL in here? Because that's really dumb if it doesn't. Yeah, that's really dumb. Uh, this is a different route. This should be a different URL here. I almost want to fork this and run it locally. Open in a new tab. It doesn't show paths in that field. Okay, but I can open it in a new tab. How do I even do that? Oh, that's the wrong thing. Open a new tab. There we go. Cool. Here we are. Dashboard, users, name, filter, Theo. Cool. Uh, Irvin. So the magic here, you see that these query params are kind of chaotic. I wouldn't want to be the one translating these. And you probably don't either, because it's really rough. One of the magic pieces of React Router is how well it handles query params. So you can have path routes and path params. So like in here, the path has invoice ID. So this now in the URL itself needs an ID. But you can also create search params. So in this case, we have the validate search params. This is what defines the query params this page can have. It can have show notes, which is an optional Boolean can have notes, which is an optional string. And now these are two valid query params that we can have on that route. Or we can go to the one that we're on right now. So if I oops, search for dashboard, route link, dashboard, no, that's, I'm too far, here. And this has a child that should have the search params. Oh, this was that one. Wait, was it? No, there's another one with search that has like the filter. Yeah, here, users view has, uh, and this is a sub key. So this key is nested in the query params, which you can't normally do. You can't normally nest query params, but users view equals, and that's what the percent seven B does. This is nesting sub objects within the query param for this route, which lets you have multiple different routes mounted at once with multiple different query params and query param like keys that they can manage nested. Absolutely magic. And you can now move one of these routes somewhere too. So I can copy this create route, like route instance and move it somewhere else and get type errors all over my code base based on where the URL now exists. I'm pretty sure percent seven B probably maps to like open curly and then there's a closed curly on the other side. Yeah, percent seven D is probably the close, but it does that all for you. It nests, it, cause by default query params can't be nested. So this is doing JSON parsing into and out of your query params. There's a, a library it's using for that. I don't remember the name of, but it, handles all that for you. So you're not thinking in URL search param parsing terms anymore. You're now writing a Zod validator and you're done. That's it. It's so much easier and it always should have been this easy. And that's the feeling I get whenever I play with or look into Tanstack router is a, wow, this is how easy it always could have been. It's magic. I am so happy with what Tanner has done here the result is magical for dashboards that have lots of like things you toggle and filter on that you want to put into query params. This is very useful. People have left behind query params because they haven't been easy enough to use. All of a sudden they are a first class citizen. Sadly, this is not there just yet for like stuffing into your next app. We plan at ping to use it for certain routes where I'm going to take a route and stub it out and say from here on, Everything is Tanstack router, so we can use it for pieces of our app. But generally speaking, this is a very new thing. If you're mostly client side and you're using Re React router, this is probably worth moving to. But if you're deep in like SSR file-based routing, we're not there just yet. Doesn't mean I don't think we're gonna get there, just being realistic about where we're at right now. This is still one of the coolest developments in the web dev world of the last many years, honestly. It's so cool to see Tanner applying his like mindset of solving the problems he has to something as critical to everyday work as routing. I do see so much potential in this library and I'm excited to start using it in my own projects. If you build complex single page apps, you should give it a shot too. Thank you for sticking by for this rant. If you haven't subscribed for some reason, which half of you haven't, please hit that sub button. It helps the channel a ton. You're also probably getting a video recommended right here that you can watch. If you haven't liked the video for some reason, get on that as well. 